Welcome to the Ask Brian Podcast Radio Show, where you'll hear from some of the most successful founders and CEOs of businesses and startups, sharing their best advice for success, and even some stories on how their mistakes actually make them even more successful. Now, here are your hosts, Brian and Tracy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're listening to the Ask Brian Radio Show on KHCS 1220. And 98.1 FM. So, for those people who have never listened to the Yes Brian Show, we've been around for over four years. So, we're going to be approaching, let's see, in January, we'll have our five year anniversary. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Go, go, go! Are you I excited, Emily? I, I, I'm getting <laughs> weird looks from Emily. Anyway, for the Yes Brian Radio Show, people who have not listened to it before, including maybe our guest. Each week we discuss, have an interview with either a startup person, a founder, or somebody that can teach something to our audience, because that's our goal. Our goal is to help people in business in some related manner, and we're very, very, have a very extinguished guest today. But before we do that, when I was younger, we start the show each week the same way. People are always asking, name your show is Ask Brian, you're not Brian, and it's spelled B-R-I-E-N. And other than, you know... (laughs) going down to the pub and meeting Mr. O'Brien, or, or my friend, <laughs> there were Brian, B-R-I-A-N, or B-R-Y-A-N. Nobody spelled the name B-R-I-A-N for a first name. So we always go through that scenario, and some people that haven't listened to the show, they want to know. And our engineer, because it begins with an E, although I've never seen his engineering degree. Do you have an engineering degree? I have a degree in communications. Well, it's not an engineering degree. No, but it, it fits. It's more way. important. More important to have a degree I think it's in a hypothetical when you work in radio. It's a hypothetical engineering degree. I was part of the radio club, mm-hmm. so it works. Well, no, none, of those, <laughs> none of those My, degree too, my degree, too, is in communication as well. So what, what you're telling me is me and you, Tracy, are cut from the same cloth on that one. So, yeah, it works. <laughs> <laughs> is the cloth big enough to go around both? Anyway, so we have some questions the audience wants to know. Besides the engineer not having a degree in engineering... They want to know why we use E in the S. Brian. Why not spell it B-R-I-N, Y-N, or why not, why not for this show, why not S. Peter, since that's my name? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a, there's a number of uh, words that are almost the theme of what S. Brian stands for. One of them was engineer, which happens to be, you know, me and Emily, who would be his engineers here. Uh, empathy would be another one, which he wasn't being very empathetic towards me or Tracy, on the fact that we both got communication degrees. Why should I be empathetic with that? Uh, because it's just be nice. <laughs> um, I, he doesn't know how to be nice. I, so apparently. Scratch that off the list. That, that's from my legal background. <laughs> aggressive, aggressive, aggressive. Others are effort because we give 100% effort in everything we do here. Well, I expect 110%, but that's okay. Outside of that, we also have experience because everybody on the Ask Brian show that's a guest is ex- experienced in whatever they do and then there's enthusiasm and excitement excitement Woo! i was trying to work enthusiasm is my favorite in case you're wondering no one asked me but i'm just gonna tell you i was that's literally it. trying to warn you Emily. well did you did you you there's still one you're missing and a new one that we're gonna add Ooh, well i think no i think there is let's see effort experience and when we got the enthusiasm and the excitement was there uh bu- 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 oh experts because everybody's an expert on Ask Brian. Bingo. So we have a new okay. one today. What is the new one? We have a new one, Trace. And okay, I, think, I, think, I think you're going to like it. Because when you think of the Ask Brian theme, the Ask Brian theme is all about educating business owners about something. We educate business owners by having an experienced startup person explain how they were able to make it. We have a, an education to explain to people how to do various services or how to do various things. So each week, we try to educate our audience. So we are now adding E, educate, and the engineer will be tested probably 19 times between now and next Thursday to make sure he has it, because I figure if we go 19 times, just like remarketing, eventually it'll sink in. Well, the good thing is I'm an educated gentleman anyway, so it works. An educated communications major who's trying to become an engineer. Not a major. Got got my degree. (laughs) Bachelor's. I guess it's acceptable for a degree. And you missed the biggest one, by the way. Well, I missed one. What was it? 
Emily. Oh, more oh. Emily. <laughs> Emily. <laughs> Emily begins with an E. Anyway, so we have our guest, Lauren. Cohen! <laughs> Are you awake now? Wow. Tracy, did I wake you up? Uh, yeah, I'm here. I'm good. Otherwise, I'd have to <laughs> scream louder like the screamer from Sunday Night Live. Sam Kinsley. Yeah, let's not do that. All right, so. Let's not do that. I'm good. Now, for the real stuff where we're going to really teach people. Lauren, you have a very, very extinguished background. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, that's right, because you're over. Let's not extinguish it. It took me a long time to get it. I thought you're over the legal career. No, 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 no. But anyway, so background, uh, I did see that you have a legal background. Besides that, what other background do you have? And uh, Well, I'm a lawyer in Canada and the U.S. both, and I'm also a realtor. So those are my main licenses. Now, the reason why we had you on the show today was... Some people are in the real estate of market in California and other places in the United States, and it's very, very hot, and it's very, very expensive to buy places. Yep. With the real mm-hmm. estate. So what we had you on for is we want to – there are our people that would like to invest not just in Los Angeles, California. You know, like not everyone is making the kind of money that our engineer is making who spends all day on the telephone looking at it right now. And so some people have a problem. So they want <laughs> – he's not even paying attention. Okay, so we wanted to know how people can invest in other countries. In the banking system in America, you know, you, typically you would get a mortgage through a bank and or sometimes there are other people that you can invest from. Does it work the same way in Canada? Oh, Canada. Well, Canada is an easy one, but you don't want, if you want to avoid expensive real estate, I don't think Canada is the place to go. Although there are some places in Canada that still have you know, uh, options available. Definitely not Ontario. Maybe Calgary, places outside of Calgary and Alberta. BC is pretty bad, British Columbia, but parts of, like, there's Regina and places in in the Prairie Provinces, some places that are more rural. But if you're looking at the cities, forget about it. It's uh, not only, well, Toronto not only is super expensive, but the taxes are debilitating, and it's also not very landlord-friendly. So, Ontario is definitely not an ideal place, in my opinion, to invest. The, the, you know, the rates of return are low, cap rate. It's just, but there are other countries, like a lot of my investors invest in Costa Rica and Mexico and Belize and overseas as well. It's all a matter of making sure that you have the right team in place before you do it. You know, you want boots on the ground. You don't want to be doing this kind of haphazardly because as soon as you invest across borders, whether it's from another country into the U.S. or from the U.S. into another country, the team becomes that much more important because you have very little control and the level of risk is much higher. So if you're going to a foreign country, do you need to speak the language of that country? For instance, if I was no. investing in Quebec, which is mostly French, or if I was investing in Costa Rica, which is mostly Spanish, would I need to speak the language? <laughs> No, you need to have people on the ground that speak the language and that speak your language. So people, you know, just like investing here in South Florida or in L.A., sometimes you're investing in a more Hispanic area and you want somebody that speaks the local language there. It's going to be the same in terms of investing into Quebec, where you do have to speak French, but that doesn't mean you have to speak French. It means you have to have a trusted advisor that speaks French. Let's go to countries like Mexico and Costa Rica. Do they have a similar property deed system to the United States? No. Actually, Mexico is a very interesting country. I've only learned about it recently because I have uh, several investors. It's a very different real estate model where it's almost like a long-term lease there in term, instead of actual ownership. So it's a very different model, and that's why it's so important to have a realtor and a lawyer that understand the rules there as well as here. And also, if you're American and you're investing into Mexico, for example, or Costa Rica, you want to be sure that you have the right structure set up or you're going to be subject to double taxation or tax issues as well or legal issues. So how do you find somebody in those countries? You know, you call me. Okay. (laughs) That's that's, that's Jenny, (laughs) 8675309. Song called eight six seven five three. I don't. What is it called, Jenny? Who's saying that song? Oh, wow. who's saying it? Come on, 
I don't know. Engineer. <laughs> I don't know. It's just from a commercial. Engineer. It's what? It's from a commercial. No, it's not from a commercial. It's, it's a not. No. Oh oh God. God. These oh people are so God. young. Google. These people are so Google. young they don't realize that. Oh, no. Oh, that's so sad. Oh, my God. I think I'm 100 years old right now. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm right there with you, 100 years old. It, yeah. you know, if it's not rap, they don't know. Anyway, um, uh, excuse me, Mr. Engineer. Type it in. I got it. It's, it's about Jenny. Yes. And it's Jenny's phone number. Yes. And what, but what is it? <laughs> it's called. I think it's the. Rom- I'm guessing it's the romantics. But I'll, it's that's Jenny. Romantics. The song is called Jenny. Really? It's not the romantics. Well, it's not the romantics. let's figure that out on a commercial break. Who is we'll it? Know. What? It's called Jenny by Tommy Two Tone. Tommy oh. Two Tone, the one yeah, hit wonder. Exactly. I'm just going to say, it's got to be a one hit wonder. Phone. I've never heard it's that says, name ever. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's funny. Uh, we're working on a radio station, so why would they have a song? Anyway, um, <laughs> so uh, are you really going to go out and on a limb and put out your phone number or email? No, I'm not putting out my phone number. <laughs> you might get 50 calls put... tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not putting out my phone number, but you can find me on LinkedIn or you can uh, look me up on um, ecouncilglobal.com or you can find me at easy, E Z C A R D, easy card backslash Lauren E S Q. So my own podcast is called Investing Across Borders, and um, my brand is really based around investing across borders. And one of the things I do when I'm in helping people invest into other countries, for example, right now I have a client that's investing into Cambodia. Now, I have never worked with Cambodian lawyers or tax professionals or anything before. So that was a new one for me. So I take the initiative of reaching out to various people that meet the requirements and then I vet them. And I have a vetting process that I've gone through, you know, so many times because this is what I do. And I use that same vetting process to approach. It doesn't matter if it's Cambodia or Canada or, you know, Costa Rica. It's the same pretty much approach, obviously in Canada, well not obviously, but I have my own network because that's where I'm originally from and I'm a lawyer there and I have my network here, but not in every state. Like today I had somebody on my master class, I teach a class on how to immigrate to real estate and the woman was originally from Peru living in Iowa and I said, now that is unusual because you don't often see, you know, Peruvians moving to a place like Iowa. So it's all it's all about your connections and your knowledge base and how you vet the client or the prospective strategic partner. That is not to say that I don't make mistakes because there are times I have one referral partner that I fired probably about six months ago after he just kept disappointing my clients. But the beauty of it is that my clients get a refund and get looked after because of me, whereas if they had gone directly to this particular referral partner, they would probably be stuck with with him. So how do you protect these people? By, by just that, by being their accountability partner and holding the referral partner accountable for whatever it is that they're doing. Um, if they aren't delivering or if they make mistakes, they don't just have the client to answer to, but also myself. And there's a credibility issue that comes into play. Like I said, nobody is perfect, and I'm not going to say that every single referral partner is perfect, but we, you know, I do go through a deep vetting process, and like anything, things happen, right? So I just make sure that the client is made whole at the end of the day, whatever that looks like. So one of the questions we had was, if people are not U.S. citizens, and they're from a country like Peru, and they're interested in buying property in Iowa, or they're in... Brazil, and they want to buy property in Boca Raton, Florida, right? Um, Normally, most people in America have a Social Security number, a FICO score, uh, and a a payroll. How can they go in and get a loan in America? So, first of all, it's going to depend on where they're from. That's going to be a big dictator in what what options they have available. For example, somebody from Canada is going to have an easier time and somebody from Canada is going to have more options than somebody from um, Peru. But the other part of that is that I I actually work with uh, several lenders and one in particular that funds foreign investors investing into U.S. real estate. At the moment, they're only funding 
Canadians, Israelis, Australians, and Brits. It's called Lendai, and I have a link that I will share. And it's great because they they fund um, you without a Social Security number. All you need is a corporate entity and a tax ID, and um, you can get funding based on your foreign credit. The other option is that they can build, they, they can obtain a, a, a visa, an E2 or an E1 or some other type of visa, a non-immigrant or an immigrant visa, and then get a Social Security number and build a real business here. But that does require hiring employees and making a significant investment. So there's all kinds of options. My most preferred option is always going to be getting a visa and finding a way to, at my tagline is, to invest, live, work, and play in the U.S and be able to build your credit here locally so that you can not only be a foreign investor accessing foreign investor credit or financing options, but also then become a domestic investor and access that. And, and do you offer the immigration services for uh, EB-5s and those type of visas? Or Yes, we are a full-service immigration consulting firm, and we provide the full range of everything from helping clients find businesses, find real estate investments, develop strategies to create those in, those uh, across-border investment portfolios and obtain visas in the process and figure out which visa and how to get there. It's really, it's a full-service, one-stop shop. That sounds great. Uh, Tracy, you had a couple of questions? Right. So I just wanted to chat female intra- entrepreneur to female entrepreneur and ask you about your journey to where you are in your business right now in terms of starting, running, founding your own business successfully. Um, Tell us how you got where you are. Sure. So I am originally from Toronto, and I've been down here in South Florida for over 20 years now. And when I first came, it was very challenging because I was a licensed lawyer in Ontario, but not in the U.S. yet. And actually... The first time I came was back in the 90s when some of the listeners probably weren't even born. And then I went back to Toronto and came back here. But the point is that it was a struggle because I couldn't work in-house. I couldn't really be a full-fledged lawyer. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I didn't even know that I was an entrepreneur at the time. I was kind of like, oh, what do I do? I was like a paralegal, a glorified paralegal. That wasn't good enough for me. So I became, I got my, my license and then I became a realtor and I did all this stuff. but Really what catapulted me into the business I'm in today was the reality that I couldn't, I was hitting brick walls in my career. And then I went on my honeymoon with my now ex-husband to Thailand. And on the way back from my honeymoon, he was put into immigration jail, expeditiously removed and subsequently deported. And that pushed me into the immigration world because I, I was like, wait a minute, I don't want this to happen to other people. And um, so, yeah, if I hadn't experienced it, I I mean, I remember it like like it was yesterday. And it was a blessing in disguise, and the silver lining is that he was deported (laughs) and that I do what I love. And in the past year, it's really developed into what now is my signature program called How to Immigrate Through Real Estate and 10 Steps to Immigrate Through Real Estate. And um, it's just really been an exciting time of, having impact and building a a portfolio um, of real estate investors and cross-border business people that are looking to expand their businesses. And, you know, at the end of the day, Tracy, I think as a female founder, impact for us is more important than revenues. All obviously we want to do well, but I'm a single mom. And I, when my son was born, I could not pay the bills. I mean, I, I could not. I actually was on some, like, food stamps. It was a terrible time financially for me, and I've been through, you know, ups and downs, but I always knew that there was something more, and I needed to to get into that something more. Well, that is such an amazing story, and so my next question was going to be, what are your biggest challenges? What are the biggest challenges that you're facing in your entrepreneurial journey? But, boy, did you already outline a couple of them. So I think I might want to reposition the question to say, how did you overcome those obstacles? So, for example, like starting out with not being able to pay your bills but still continuing that vision for, to know that you could be successful. What are the, some of the things that you use to get you through that difficult time? Um, prayer. A lot of, you know, prayer and perseverance and 
my dad also was very ill. Uh, my, my son was born, he was having trouble breathing, and then um, he was diagnosed with ALS, and that journey was hell. I was here in Florida, he was in Toronto, and it was, I mean, a, a harrowing experience, and my, my son was, was very little, and we were going back and forth all the time, and honestly, I don't know even how I, I got through it. Like, it, it, in retrospect, uh, it, was, it was sheer will, that perseverance. I mean, it was a choice. I had to get through it. I had to look after my son and protect him and make sure he was okay, and you know, today he's almost 11. He'll be 11 in two weeks, and actually two weeks today. And um, he's in there getting me um, a little cheat on my diet, like an ounce of frozen yogurt. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> I think I just put that out there. Anyway, um, okay. well, this is a judgment-free then. Don't worry. Okay. Don't, we only have a couple anyway. hundred thousand listeners, so don't worry. Okay, I have to say. <laughs> anyway, so, um, so and, and, you know, he's thriving, and... I have my COVID pup in the car with me and my 14-year-old dog, and we're, we're all doing well. And, you know, he hasn't seen it, – it's been a challenging time for us through COVID, for sure. At the beginning, business was extremely, extremely down because nobody was investing across borders. So what did I do? I pivoted, and I helped people get money from the SBA and other government resources. So it's all, it's all about finding – like I, my, my book, by the way, is called Finding Your Silver Lining in the Business Immigration Process. My nonprofit is called Find Your Silver Lining. At the end of the day, it's all about finding that silver lining through the clouds and figuring out a way to persevere because at the end of the day, my, my group during um, the beginning of COVID was called Pivot or Perish, and that's really the truth. You have to pivot or you're going to perish, and that was that's how I lived my life, and instead of you know, I always strive to thrive, and it doesn't mean I'm always there or I'm always right or whatever, but self-care has been a big part of it. I actually also experienced COVID recently, despite being vaccinated, um, beginning of August, and I'm having throat issues that will probably, unfortunately, continue for months to months. And as a speaker, you can imagine, like right now, I feel like somebody is literally sawing at my throat, and I did I oh my did a webinar and hosted a podcast today, so, and it's, it's very challenging. <laughs> I think based on that, you deserve a much bigger uh, container of yogurt than, frozen yogurt than just one ounce, that's all I'm saying, and I mean, I would say that that could actually be considured a medical treatment at this point, but you should just go big. I don't know about you. Well, I don't. I, I don't think I'm supposed to actually have, have dairy, which is really bad, besides the fact that I, I, it's, I'm on this stupid diet, pardon my French, but also, <laughs> I'm not supposed to have dairy because of my throat, so I'm doing double damage. So there you go. Uh -oh. well, we should not smoke. Um, um, yeah, I was <laughs> smoking <laughs> while you're eating your French and yogurt. That's so gross. Yeah, exactly. I just, I'm definitely eating well, a little sugar. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you mentioned your podcast, and of course, um, the fact that I'm a podcast producer, I couldn't let that go unrecognized. Tell us a little bit about your podcast and what led you to begin and start your podcast. So I'm, as an entrepreneur, I'm in a lot of these entrepreneurial groups and one of my big clients is Jay Facet, who is the head of JVology and Jay Facet introduced me to Doug Sandler, who happens to be local in LA, um, to, well, so relatively local. And Doug runs um, Turnkey Podcast and Doug and I connected with about getting money for the SBA. He put me on his podcast. We became friends, and he helps people develop podcasts. And I was like, well, you know, it sounds interesting. I have a message. So I'm actually just today, uh, yesterday, I think, I recorded my 52nd or episode. So I'm right at the year mark. I think we're celebrating our one-year anniversary, like, next Wednesday when we publish that. So I just knew that I needed to do something that was marketing driven to bring my brand to, you know, bring more awareness to my brand. And it, it's been in a lot of ways a perfect storm for me because especially since I deal a lot with Canadians and, and Brits and, you know, people from all over the world, but Canadians are always going to be my mainstay because I am one. They want out. They've been on lockdown. They're frustrated. And a lot of them want opportunities and options and flexibility. And I have provided that solution for them. So, um, you know, today I had 98 people registered for the webinar. And so it's been a great way to bring 
my message to a broader audience and also to give credence to some of the people that, you know, clients and future clients and give them a, a, a platform and then in turn they want to give me a platform and so it's a win-win. I will tell you, probably, Tracy, you've seen this, I see a lot of people reaching out and saying, I have a great podcast guest for you. I have a great podcast guest for you. And I'm thinking, yeah, but what's, like, where, where's the synergy? Where's the alignment? I'm not just going to put you on my podcast because you tell me you have a great guest. There, there has to be a, some alignment and some, some exchange of, of value. I'm not, it, it, you know, and, and that's been very interesting as well, is having the ability to say no and to say yes and to create relationships, because at the end of the day, for me, that's what it's all about. So, Lauren, if people want to, uh, you already gave us how, to, how people can reach you, but you have a website. What is a website people can go to to get more information if they want to? So I do have more than one website, but most of my webinars and all of that type of thing and the cross-border information is available on realestateacrossborders.com. So it's realestateacrossborders.com backslash webinar backslash USA program, backslash mastermind. Additionally, my podcast website is laurenesq.com, which is my main brand, Lauren ESQ, my personal brand. So you can always find me there. And but I do have um, two, two webinars, I'm sorry, two webinars a month. One um, is a masterclass on the, how to immigrate through investment or real estate. And the second is a realtor and real estate investors mastermind. So they're on opposite uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays, depending. So is it every every other uh, week? No. It's what I have one. I, I, I honestly don't remember if it's the third Wednesday of each month is usually the master class, and the fourth Thursday of each month is usually the mastermind, I, I believe. It's, it's all on there and hopefully updated. What is the difference between a master class and a mastermind? So the master class is B2C. It's about teaching people how to immigrate through real estate or immigrate through investment. So it's actually focused on the actual client or investor, whereas the mastermind is an international mastermind designed to help realtors and other real estate investors collaborate to help each other to build and grow our international businesses and pipeline. Tracy had one, one more question. Um, I just wanted to say, if you were to give a tip out to somebody who was struggling in their journey of entrepreneurship, what would be one tip you would provide? Just don't let fear stand in your way, because the longer you wait to do whatever it is that you're going to do, and the longer that you hold on to that job, the longer you're going to be J-O-B, just over broke. You've got to take the bull by the horns and take risk, because if you don't take risk, you're not a true entrepreneur. and you can't just, you know, hold on to that security blanket forever. Is that your definition for an entrepreneur? Someone takes... No, I'm, I'm just... <laughs> no, the security blanket? No, not having a security blanket? No, John. Uh, maybe. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I, think my, I think my definition of entrepreneur is pretty close to my definition of insanity. <laughs> They're very closely aligned, aren't they? <laughs> very, very closely aligned. You're the best. Thank you so much. <laughs> There's a very high correlation, I guess. And and my myself too. I mean, I'd have to be insane to do this show and to be a lawyer, and I try to do both sometimes. Um, we are actually we have about thirty seconds left. So, your biggest challenge you already told us. What is the what is your goal in the next five years? My goal in the next five years is to be able to provide these services on a grander scale to people from all over the world and help them to really a path to successful investment and business expansion across borders and to be able to travel freely across borders myself without all these crazy restrictions that are going on right now and to continue to hopefully participate in making the world a better place. Well, thank you very much. You've been an excellent guest. Uh, appreciate it. We'll have you back on later because there's a whole bunch more questions I wanted to get into, like if I wanted to invest in foreign countries, what I would need to do as an American citizen. A lot of people would like that that angle, so maybe we'll do that in the, in the near future. Thank you very much. 
Thank you for tuning in to the Ask Brian radio show. You can listen to us every Thursday on KTHS AM 1220 and FM 98.1 or via Facebook Live or anytime wherever you listen to your podcasts. Visit askbrian.com to join the conversation and ask us your business questions and we'll answer them on our next episode. That's askbrien.com.